on guys this is the one man army mr easy for life coming back at you guys once again with another blade and so video and today i kind of wanted to do something a little bit different actually this is something that i should have done a very long time ago however i think right now is a pretty good time to do this uh since the fact that we are now in the new expansion we are level 55 and i believe this rotation well Pretty much the main gist of it is I'm going to be showing you guys the new rotation, the new level 55 rotation for Earth Destroyer build. And the reason why I wanted to do that in this video today, and the reason why I haven't done a video like this in, in, a, um, in the past, is because I, we are going to be in level 55 for a while, and I think this rotation that I'm about to show you is something that even Korean destroyers uh, use to this day, right? For the, for the most part. Anyway, so as you, as I just said, I'm gonna be uh, today's video is gonna be all about the destroyer worth uh, PVE, uh, destroyer PVE Earth build rotation, and I'm gonna be showing you guys what sequence of skills that I use in fights, and as well as uh, some of the other utility stuff that I use uh, to buff myself. Uh, as well as we're gonna talk about builds, man. I'm gonna talk to you guys about my general PVE build that I pretty much use 24/7, uh, and then we'll go into some other builds. Uh, for other 55 fights, uh, or other fights that I do, I guess, hmm, I don't know how to really word this out, uh, kind of just going off of, uh, what I'm thinking in my head, uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna be showing you off builds for PvE, as well as, um, builds for certain fights, like Yoharin, as well as VT, and some other stuff like that, uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh, show you guys, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm pretty much uh, going to show you guys the general rotation that I normally do in uh, PvE fights. And uh, then we'll talk about the build, okay? We will talk about the build. So, anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so, this is what I do for my rotation. This is my general rotation that I use all the time. I toss out the ultimate skill, Eye of the Storm. And then we go in from there with our regular rotation that we had in level 50 content, I guess you could say. So, let's do that. So, this is what it looks like. And that is pretty much it, man. That is pretty much the rotation, my initial uh, rotation that I use in uh, PVE. And then after that, pretty much everything else is I kind of just use. I do one of two things. One is that I pretty much use any skills that is up. Sometimes in certain fights, I actually wait until uh, all my um, all my cooldowns are pretty much off cooldown, such as the Ember Stomp and the Smash, and then I kind of go ahead and just use it all once again you know so yeah that is pretty much the rotation that I normally use you know Fury's up again just do that and you know get your get your mighty cleaves going oh man I thought I was gonna get another one there anyway yeah that is that okay okay so, you're probably wondering, what the fuck did I do? That was a lot of skills that I just used and whatnot. It's really not. If you, you know, if you practice this rotation for a bit, it's going to become clear to you and you're going to build up the muscle memory or whatever and all that jazz. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the, um, what I just did there. Okay, so, as you saw there in the beginning, I tossed out the Eye of the Storm rotation, or the Eye of the Storm uh, ultimate move, which is key binded to your B okay it's B and uh, yeah we like to use that ultimate move because it doesn't actually the reason why we like to use eye of the storm and not the axe frenzy is because eye of the storm actually does not lock us into an animation like some of the ultimate skills for other classes such as BMs and FMs and whatnot uh, we are pretty much we pretty much just toss out a boomerang axe and that's it you know that's pretty much it it just does damage on the boss over time and uh, we're able to go ahead and uh, start our initial rotation uh, on top of the ultimate skills rotation uh, on top of the sk ultimate skills damage if, if that kind of makes sense so it's pretty much just ultimate skill damage on top of our regular uh, on top of our regular initial uh, rotation damage and I mean that alone right there is just gonna give you a fuck ton of DPS uh, in the initial fight, right? This is one of the reasons why Destro, Earth Destro, has like a really good, um, 
a really good initial burst, right? We have really, really good initial burst, which has helped me a lot in the past, like in Yoharin. Uh, I'm able to, these days, get her down to 75% because of this burst. And, uh, you know, within the first 10 seconds of the fight. And, uh, yeah, man, it's helped me. It, it helps a lot with clear times and whatnot. Anyway, so the, the, uh, the sequence of skills that I do is, like I said, we do Eye of the Storm. And then after that, we go ahead and use our Blitz, which is a gap closer. It's also a stun. We'll talk about that in the build. But we use Blitz as a gap closer after tossing out Eye of the Storm just to get in front of the boss. Then we open up with a Fury to get that Explosive Rage going. If you have the VT badge, that stuff... I mean, it, Explosive Rage does a fuck ton of damage. And of course, that is uh, very uh, crucial, very critical at the start of the fight, so you have to do that. If you don't, then it's no big deal, right? I, I get it, Vortex Temple, right? I, I, I get that. You know, some of us aren't, you know, uh, privileged or haven't gotten the opportunity to get this badge just yet. Uh, and yeah, so anyway, so Blitz, and then you start off with the Fury, and then we go ahead and Ember Stomp to give us that Cleave and Mighty Cleave buff. And then we go ahead and use our Smash, which Smash during Fury does a fuck ton of damage. And if you have that with the... Uh, Courage Soul Badge, you actually reduce the cooldown of your Fury, making it making you able to use it uh, a lot faster than uh, you were than you were, I guess, if you didn't have it. You know what I mean? It pretty much just shaves off six seconds as you're reading the ability right now. So that's what we do. And after that, it's pretty much just Wrath, Cleave, and then Mighty Cleave. Uh, whenever it's up, okay, that's pretty much about it. So one more time, we use Eye of the Storm, Gap Close with the Blitz. We Ember, oh uh, no, yeah, Gap Close with the Blitz, Fury, Explosive Rage, into an Ember Stomp for the buff, into a Smash to, to reduce the cooldown of Fury, and then it's Wrath, it's Wrath, plus Cleave, plus uh, Mighty Cleave, which is the F skill, right? And the reason why we want to spam those Mighty Cleaves is because it triggers the Tiger Bracelet effect, which as you can see, on a successful Mighty Cleave, we get 200% uh, attack power bonus on a successful Cleave. Uh, during the Tiger effect, okay? Mighty Cleave procs the Tiger effect, like I just said. Uh, making our Cleave even more powerful. So that's why we spam Mighty Cleave. And plus, Mighty Cleave does a lot of damage by itself, too. Right? That's the uh, Chilled Flame Elixir uh, Hung Moon skill. Uh, so, uh, yeah. That is pretty much the rotation, man. If you want to see it again, I'll do it one more time for you. And then we're going to talk about builds. So... Uh, oh, also, one more thing I forgot to mention is pre-pots, okay? Pre-pots are very important, okay? It helps you give... And this is actually not the pre-pot that I use in fights. I'm actually crafting one... Uh, crafting pre-pots on my alt right now. And the pre-pots that I, that I want you to craft is actually called the Awakened Potion. I think it's called Awakened Potion. Something like that. It's called Awakened Potion. Um, and uh, it pretty much gives you 100 AP... Uh, gives you, yeah, 100 AP over the course of 12 seconds. And 12 seconds is pretty much all you need uh, to get your initial burst going, to get your initial, uh, you know, rotation going and whatnot, to get you up on that DPS meter and uh, all that goodness, right? So, um, like I said, this isn't the one that I use. I'm actually crafting it on my Silver Cauldron uh, alt. Uh, but pretty much the Awakened Potion uh, is pretty much, like, the best pre-pot that you can... Well, it's not the best pre-pot, but it's a good pre-pot that you can send to other characters and whatnot. If your main character has Silver Cauldron, then you could craft the better pre-pot, which I believe is called the Master Hung Moon... No, the Master Awakened Potion, something like that. You could check it out. Um, and that gives you, like, 170 AP. Uh, but if it's on an alt, you can't... You cannot transfer the Master... Um, the Master Awaken Potion to other characters. So I pretty much just craft the Awaken one, right? The regular one that gives 100 AP. And uh, that's what I, I would normally do nowadays uh, to start a fight. So I'll do it one more time and I'll, I'll say it how exactly I do it. So pre pot, you know, I'm not going to pre pot right now. Obviously, I don't even have pre pots. I mean, I guess I could use this one, but it's, it's, it's on a, honestly not even that good. It's not even worth it. Whatever. So I would pre pot. Okay, pre-pot, and then immediately go into Eye of the Storm, gap close with your one, Ember Stomp, Fury, and then Smash, and then uh, Wrath plus Cleave plus Mighty Cleave. I guess I did that kind of wrong. I, I, I just told you to Fury in the beginning, but I guess it doesn't really matter. If you want to... That was actually a terrible start. But uh, if you want to... If you want to uh, Fury, and Ember, then Ember Stomp, or Ember Stomp and Fury, you can definitely do so. And yeah... And like I said, just pretty much use, I'm just using whatever the fuck is up. 
any types of any type of skill that is up. Man, my ping is just so shit today. There must be a lot of traffic, a lot of people logging on. Well, whatever. You get the point. You get the point. And we started the fight again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I have the storm into a blitz, into a fury or ember stomp, or ember stomp fury, whatever, into a smash for the to reduce the cooldown. Wrath plus cleave plus uh, mighty cleave. And uh, yeah, man, that is pretty much the rotation. And like I said, after that, it's pretty much just using whatever skills that are up. Or you could wait until all your cooldowns are ready to go again, and then you can just do that sequence again. Fury, Ember Stomp, Smash, Mighty Cleave, or Wrath Cleave, Mighty Cleave, and uh, whatnot. So yeah, that is that. Next up, we're going to talk about some builds. So the build that I'm pretty much using as a general build uh, pretty much all the time is this. This is what you're looking at right now. I use this build pretty much 24 7 unless it unless when it comes to like certain fights like Yoharin or VT we'll talk about that um, but for the most part like in Hollow's Heart or in Starstone Mines this is pretty much the build that I use so we got the PV Judgment we got the Mighty Cleave Cleave we have the Double Stun Ram okay this is a double stun this one I'm pretty sure it's just a gap closer or, it, or no it maintains it maintains uh, stun days and knockdown uh, and whatnot. I actually use this in VT just because, or mostly for Twin Asuras, just because it, it has a 9 second cooldown and it's a very easy uh, uh, gap closer to use on the Fire Asura after I, I uh, send the orb to my, send the orb to the range tank. I can get back to the boss immediately with this. Uh, for, but for the most part, we keep the double stun on this. We keep the grab for the uh, restraint skill. Uh, this one, we actually, I actually used it for the iframe. Okay, you can iframe it, and of course, it, to resist things like phantom grab or even airborne. Okay, airborne is very, uh, airborne is something that they actually do that the cats do in Yo uh the Yoran Harin fight. The DPS, the DPS cat, I believe, does a lot of airborne attacks to you, which does a lot of critical damage. So you know. Using this is actually very handy. Of course, we use the Ember Stomp for the cleave and the Mighty Cleave damage. Is that pretty much the offensive Ember Stomp? Uh, this one is uh, very situational. Okay, so if you're tanking, you would want to go to the right, which is the parry. You know, if you're some of you destroyers who are very high geared, uh, who go into I guess uh, LFP or whatever because you don't have your static group for that night. Uh, you go in there, you end up getting a group that's a little bit lower geared, and you end up being the main tank. Uh, this is something that you can actually use in cer in um, in certain dungeons. However, if it's dungeons like Desolate Tomb, Nari Foundry, whatever, you can just keep it on this one. And this one pretty much uh, gives you, you know, increase your defenses by 400%, and gives you the 80% uh, the 80, 80 movement speed, which is really nice. It's very good in Hollow's Heart, uh, that 80% movement speed. Uh, you know when I'm getting the flowers trying to move to the uh, the correct flower to pull my uh, the party members uh, This is really good for that movement speed. This one however is really really tanky This is a really tanky uh, hurricane our tab spin increases my defense by 500% and mitigates the first attack by mitigates any incoming damage the first attack of that incoming damage that is uh, by 40% so the first hit is getting mitigated by like 540% uh, plus your 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 defense, whatever you have by default, uh, and then after that your your defense is pretty much increased by 500%. So it's fucking amazing. This is a really tanky tabsman that I actually used to use back in the day, back in Moonwater days when we didn't have a lot of self healing abilities and destroyer having very minimal iframes compared to the other classes in the game. This is all I had to. This is all I could use to rely on was to mitigate the damage, increase my, and self-buff my defenses so that I pretty much take no damage. Uh, like I said, this is a really good, uh, you know, really good uh, tab spin in case you want some uh, some uh, damage mitigation, I guess, whatever. But for the most part, uh, I pretty much just use this one. I guess this one, actually, I use this in Young Sang as well as um, just other fights in general. I think we let's see. I'm trying to think what I use this for. Oh, I actually use this for the second boss in Nari Foundry. He does, or even Zakan in uh, Ebon Citadel. He does those yellow indicator moves that actually knock you down. And if you look at the the regular tab spin, you it actually does not resist against. Um, it isn't resisting its knockdown. Okay, so Zakan or the second boss in Nari Foundry actually does a lot of knockdown moves. So the only way to resist that is is by pairing it, and that's what I would pretty much use it for. So yeah, yeah, pretty much it's a pretty much our half half second block. It's just a block, is what it is. 
Anyway, that's that. This one, very situational. I keep it on the knockdown. Uh, this one is the boomerang axe. I use it in PvP. Uh, this one is the vacuum, the vacuum uh, Z. And I pretty much use that on the cats, the cats in uh, Yoharn fight to group them all up together, that is, right? So, yeah, uh, that's that's that, but I mostly keep it on the knockdown. This one, you can do whatever you want. It's a daze. Uh, you can have the daze proc on your hurricane spin, or you can have the daze proc on your power slam whenever you grab an enemy. Okay, I use it to grab on the enemy because most of, my, most of the times when I do need daze, I'm usually in a party, and my party members can usually take care of the days, so I use this one instead just to um, just to pretty much not get it in the way, because this does take up a spot on my F skill, and F skill, and the F F button is already tied, has already already has so many buttons tied to the, uh, the F key that I pretty much don't need another one cluttering up the, uh, the F priority skill and whatnot, so... Yeah, I pretty much just use this one just to get it out of the way and not take up space on my uh, my F key. Yeah, my F key. Uh, this one, like I said, is the gap closer. This is also a stun. It's a stun, but it's also a gap closer. This one I mostly use in PvP. This pulls your enemy towards you and dazes them. Very good for PvP. Uh, and this one right here is pretty much, I guess, a survivability tactic. I use this on the Twin Asuras. Because it gives me back HP whenever I take damage uh, from pairing the the orbs, right? So, yeah, or something like that. Or if the Red Asura is gonna, you know, if I'm about to take a hit, I get hit, I could pretty much use this and get back 50% uh, of the damage as HP, right? It also it also counts as a little bit of an iframe, as you can see, it resists damage and status effects. So, uh, yeah, it is an iframe. So, but it, like I said, it's mostly for survivability. Use it on the Twin Asuras. Uh, this one we use it for uh, this shield I use for the party buff, uh, as well as the uh, it decreases any of the, your party members' uh, incoming damage by 70%. So very good party support ability uh, utility, and it also has the iron plating, which the iron plating works the same as the FM's frost sheath. So uh, yeah, if we don't have an FM in the party. Uh, then I'll pretty much use this as a substitute and it works just as fine. And then of course we have Fury. Always keep it on the Fury. I don't know, I, I've never actually used Persistence at all. You always keep it on the fucking Fury, okay? And that is pretty much the build that I use for the, for PvE 24-7. Okay, so... Damn, this is already a long-ass video. I apologize, man. I always tend to ramble on. It pisses me off. But, uh... At least you got the point. I got the point across it, right? Um, let's see. What else? Uh, okay. So let me look at my notes here. I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, so VT. All right, so VT, VT, VT. So the first boss, the VT, which is the Twin Asuras, I work as a keeper. Okay, I'm a keeper in the Twin Asuras fight. And this is the build that I actually, I actually use. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I do. Yeah, okay, so I pretty much just mess with my 1 and my 2 and my tab spin. I need the parry spin in the Twin Asuras as a keeper because I need to parry those orbs uh, when it go when it's trying to approach uh, uh, the Red Asura. I'm on the red side. Okay, so I'm parrying those red orbs. That's why I use the parry. Or, it, or I guess... If I was any other class, they would be blocked. Like I said, this is pretty much a block, so I, I use it for that. Uh, this one, however, like I said, it's it's a gap closer, and it's 9 seconds of uh, on the cooldown, okay? So, whenever I go to parry the orb, I can pretty much use this to immediately get back on the Asura and do some damage and whatnot. And that's pretty much what I do for that. Uh, for this one, same thing, mostly a survivability thing. Uh, it's If I'm taking hits from the Red Asura while going to parry the orb or whatever, because he does... He does do some range attack moves, or if I step into a red sword um, that he throws on the ground, then I can immediately gap close to him and get some HP back. Uh, like I said, you get a, or you need to remember that I'm not a Shadow Destroyer, so I don't have, I cannot rely on, on things like Gale Force. Okay, Gale Force would be something that I could rely on because it gives me HP back. Uh, I don't have that. Okay, so. This is what I have to use as a, as a substitute. Now, some may think, some may say that, oh, use the uh, uh, Transcendence Axe, you know, or the Ascendant Axe. Well, motherfucker, that takes a lot of mats, and I don't have that, okay? So I pretty much just go in there with my Riftwalk these days, and, uh, yeah. So I don't have the Ascendant Axe, nor do I plan on getting it anytime soon unless I get fully invested uh, in PvP. I don't know. I may get into it. Who knows? Destro is pretty good in PvP. Uh, but, uh, yeah. 
I don't have that. I don't have that axe. Okay, so I don't have all that survivability. And this is just what I use. And I think that is pretty much about it. That's pretty much about it for the Twinosaurus fight. For the second boss, uh, it's pretty much my regular, my regular build, my regular PVE build uh, for the second boss because there isn't much going on. So yeah, for the third boss, the third boss, the Iron Conqueror, uh, I used this spin instead, the tanky spin, and that is because. When you get to the last phase in the Iron Conqueror, you have these lasers pointed in a star-shaped format, okay? Sometimes I need to cross between those lasers. And let me tell you, those lasers do a fuck ton of damage to your HP. Those of you who've done Iron Conqueror know what I'm talking about. Anytime you cross those lasers, lasers or if you touch those lasers, it does a lot of damage to you, okay? So this is what I pretty much use. I use this to be able to not take any damage or not so much damage at all and to be able to cross over to the la cross over to each laser uh, while it's moving right in that star star form uh, that star shaped formation that it makes um, in the last phase okay so uh, yeah um, like I said you know survivability can be a bit of an issue uh, with iron conquer so I need to rely on this really tanky tab spin uh, to keep my ass alive because if I die and I am doing some of the, I am doing a lot of the not a whole lot, but I am doing some very important me mechanics in the Iron Conqueror. Then uh, it's 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 almost a wipe. It's pretty much a wipe unless they can revive me quick. Uh, but for the most part, I think this is it for the Iron Conqueror. I pretty much just use this. Um, I could I could use this. However, in the last phase, you have to stun these orbs. Okay, these metal these steel balls uh, in the Iron Conqueror. You need to stun them. So therefore, I actually keep my stuns the way they are, right? Because you would stun them one time on the star formation, and they would come in and make a hexagon formation, and then I, I would have used this to stun them again. So I pretty much need two stuns, um, or I guess a CC. I don't know. I maybe it could be a no. I think it's a stun. Yeah, it's got to be a stun. So I, I need two stuns basically. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the um, uh, the Iron Conqueror for the final boss. Uh, Zulia, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing the bug mechanic where you have to pull the bugs in. So I would have to switch over to the vacuum, okay, the vacuum uh, Z, just to pull those bugs in. And I'll probably keep this just in case, unless I get really comfortable with the fight. Uh, but but for the most part, I think the, the range people are actually doing most of the work in Zulia. Uh, but uh, I'll keep it as that, and uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much all I would need to change is just pretty much do that for the mechanic. Uh, that would be the Julia fight, okay? Uh, for the Yuharn fight, because I I did see some of you people have been letting me have been asking me what I use for that fight, and let's see, what do I change? What do I change? Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I pretty much just mess with the grab so I can, you know, I pretty much mess with the grab for the shorter cooldown grab because it's only me, right? I'm the only one. In that fight, so I don't need to do, I don't need to have the restraint skill. So having the lower cooldown one definitely helps me when I can do things like grab the grab Yoharan or grab one of the cats uh, in the fight. So yeah, I change the grab to the shorter cooldown one, and I go to the tanky Ember Stomp. Uh, I used that in the video. Okay, I had to use that in the video, uh, and then of course we keep the vacuum. Uh, Z just to pull the cats in to pull the cats in and CC them and pretty much just burst them down uh, This is the fight <clears throat> This is the build. This is the build that I use for uh, yeah that fight. Okay um, You got to keep in mind that in that fight unless you are really fucking geared up the cats and Yoharn herself does a lot of deep does a lot of damage to you it, it you know I actually went in there I actually went in there with uh, with a 4020, as you can see. I still I still kept it on this, uh, but I, I went in there with 40 in offense and 20 and 20 basically 20 in defense just to get that HP buff, uh, because the cats, especially the cats, they eat through my HP like nothing. It it is just absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, I spec into that. But on top of that, I pretty much spec into the defensive uh, the defensive stomp. Just for that extra defense. And that's it. That's pretty much the Yoharn fight. Of course, like I said, I will make guides on that fight in the future. As well as uh, guides on some of the newer dungeons like Hollow's Heart and Starstone. I, I see your feedback. I really do. 
Uh, so I will make guides for that. But for the build, this is what it is. Because I saw I saw someone comment that in the, in the um, the Outlaw Island video, and this is pretty much that. Oh, same thing with the tab spin. I don't keep it on this one. I keep it on this one uh, for that extra defense, right? I, I I go in there with like so much defense. It is not even. It's it ain't even funny, man. Like fucking. I mean, if I had the gear to just burst the O'Haran down to the point where it won't even matter that I have all this defense, then that would be great. But for right now, I, you know, my gear isn't up to par to that level yet. Um, so this is what I have to do in order to, to, to stay alive, you know. Keep it on the tanky spin. Do that for the cats. Do this just in general, just to give me more defense. And yeah, that is pretty much the Yoharn build that I use. Uh, and so far, it has been working fine for me. It's been working great for me. Of course, it is not the fastest build. Like, it, it's not the most optimal build to clear Yoharn for the fastest. But motherfucker, I'm just trying to get it done for that 11 gold, okay? Let's, let's be honest here. I'm just trying to get the daily done. I don't really give a shit about the clear time right now, okay? So, this is the build that I use, and it's been going pretty good so far. That is that. Okay, cool. So that was the VT build, that was the Yoharn build, that was my general PvE build. Um, trying to think of anything that I have to say in order to remind you guys with. It's been almost a week since this, since this expansion has started. And I hope you all are having a very good time with the expansion. Because I ain't gonna lie, oops, sorry. I ain't gonna lie, man, I'm having a lot of fun in 55. 55 is just absolutely amazing. I'm so happy it's finally here. I've just, just been having a blast lately, you know? Yeah, it, 55 is just fucking fun. Uh, anything I have? Anything else? Trying to think. Uh, oh, don't forget to get your jackpot, right? You gotta get your jackpot. I'm currently at stage eight as of the recording of this video. But uh, yeah, you won't believe how many people forget to get their jackpot. It's not even funny, or even your even the daily mushroom. So uh, yeah, make sure to get the jackpot from the from the uh, F10 as well as your daily mushroom, right? Your uh, the Viper Camp event is going on right now, and uh, you gotta pick up that free mushroom, okay? So, uh, I mean, it's just one free mushroom just for logging in, fucking just just get it, okay? Don't forget to get that. Uh, what else? Uh, the stamina, okay, so the stamina thing, which is this one right here. You need this item, the Karen Antler. You can do one of two things. You can either uh, craft it, as you can see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can either craft it. This is the mats that it costs to make. It's pretty expensive. However, if you... However, like in my case, if I had the mats that were already pre-farmed or whatever, pre-farmed mats that I didn't buy at all off the market just by, you know, I pretty much just farmed it just from, by playing the game, uh, then you could craft it, get one for yourself, and, you know, make a little bit of a profit on the market. Uh, as you can see, you can craft up to nine. I got some crafting right now. Uh, so you need that for the quest item. That's going to give you, like, more uh, wind walking energy, right? You pretty much run up a tree, you give it to the um, old man Cho, and, uh, yeah, man, don't forget to do that, okay? So, yeah, so I got the Karen Antler thing, got your jackpot, got that thing. Don't forget to do the Viper Camp every day. That's the event dungeon. I think that is about it, man. I think that's all the uh, reminders and the uh, the tips and tricks and, the, and, and some advice that I have for you guys. Uh... But other than that, I think that is about it. I don't want it to make this video longer than it needs to be. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, but for the most part, like I said, this isn't really a, a complicated rotation. It's not really a, a really uh, complicated uh, uh, guide. And, uh, yeah, I hope you learned something from it. So, I'll do it one more time. I'll do it one more time. Just remember, uh, this is how it goes. Uh, some of the things you can also do is, is you can see me uh, breaking my camera. I press my mouse wheel to do that. Uh, the reason why I actually do that and I have been doing that these days is because for whatever reason, and this has been founded by Kisu, uh, full credit goes to him. He's a amazing Korean uh, KR Destro. And uh, yeah, man, this is one of his tricks that he has come up with. And uh, so far, I'm liking it. it. For whatever reason, by breaking your camera like this, you're able to animation cancel a lot quicker, a lot faster, uh, and it's more optimal. I don't know how the hell he fa figured it out, uh, but for whatever reason, he's been doing it. He likes it, and if it works for him, then goddammit, I'm going to use it too. So, uh, yeah, man. So, yeah. Anyway, so the rotation is, like I said, one more time before I let you go, is, uh, you know, obviously break the camera if you want. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it, but I, I like to do it. Break the camera, and then I would pre-pot. Okay, pre-pot. 
and then immediately go into a Eye of the Storm, into a Blitz, Fury, Stomp, Smash, and then we Cleave, or we Wrath, Cleave, and Mighty Cleave our way to the top, right? Yes. Yeah, that was a pretty, yeah, that was an okay start. I, I've had better ones. And then after that, you can do one of two things. You can wait until your skills are pretty much ready to go again. Like that. Or you can pretty much use whatever skill is up. As soon as it goes off cooldown, you can go ahead and use it. Uh, one tip, actually, is uh, don't use Smash unless your Fury is on cooldown. If you use Smash, okay, which is your X, and Fury, while Fury is off cooldown, you are pretty much going to waste the Courage Badge effect, okay? So make sure to Smash after you use Fury, okay? That's something you need to remember pretty much all the time, okay? So if Fury is off cooldown, I would go like that, and then Smash, right? I'm, you know, obviously I'm multitasking, so I'm not, I'm not fucking focusing at all. So this is very sloppy, uh, but you, I hope you get the point, okay? I hope you get the, uh, the idea, the gist, and whatnot. Go like that, because Fury was off cooldown. And Fury's off cooldown, so we go like that. Get some Mighty Cleaves going. Yes, yes. Hello there, Mighty Cleaves, my best friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much that. Yeah, I was able to go up back from 190 back into the 200s. That's awesome. Back into the 200s. Okay. So yeah, that is pretty much the rotation. So if you want to, like I said, if you want to get the rotation once more. One more time again, just go ahead and rewind the video, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But the I guess the list of it, the gist of it is um, Pre-Pot, Eye of the Storm, Gap Close with the Blitz, Fury, Stomp, Smash, then Wrath, Cleave, plus Mighty Cleave, your way to the top. And that is the initial rotation. Okay. I think that's uh, I think that's about it, man. That's all I wanted to uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. This video is way too long already, so I need to fucking... I gotta go. I gotta go. All right. Uh, anyways, guys, that is about it. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you are still watching right now, um, thank you so much. You, uh, your viewership means the world to me. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos to come your way. I'm going to be doing some guides on the dungeons as well as the Yoharn fight or Outlaw Island, I guess, in general. Uh, so stay tuned for those guides coming up in the future. What else do we have? We have Trove coming out. Trove is coming out next week, so we expect to see a Trove video uh, coming out very soon. We're gonna do we're gonna be doing some Trove in action. We're gonna see if we can find some gilded gems. However, I'm not sure if I'll be lucky enough to do that. But uh, we'll be on the hunt for him. We'll be looking out for him. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that Trove action, whatever guides, videos, and whatnot. I, I told you, man, I fucking told you, this month I was going to be on the grind. More videos, a lot of videos, a lot of shit for me to cover. Uh, so, you know, check out the other videos that I posted in the uh, the past two or three days, because uh, I've been posting a lot lately. And, uh, yeah. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you all, as always. Hopefully you're all having a very easy day. I'm losing my voice right now, so this hurts like hell. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I love you guys. Hopefully you're all having a very easy day. Stay tuned for more to come your way. And this has been the One Man Army, Mr. Easy for Life. And I'm out. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. It really means a lot to me. If you like what you see, then don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. Or even better yet, click that bell you see on the screen now to become part of the notification squad today. In order to get notified when a new video gets uploaded, increasing your chances to write first in the comment section below. Now all my social media links are in the description box below, and if you don't give a shit about any of that, then just share this video with your friends, share this with your family, or even share this with your mom. Any support at all is greatly appreciated. I love you guys as always, and I hope you all are having a very easy day, and this has been the One Man Army, Mr. Easy for Life, and I'm out. Peace!